Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Was Trained by Goku and Vegeta for Ultra Instinct Part 3. Before we start please go support Namina Visuals for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Chapter 13. A Fearful Meeting. The USJ attack was finally over. Izuku yawned loudly as his arm stretched over his head, raising his shirt over his abdomen for a brief second. He sat in his bed as he looked out the window tiredly. Due to the incident, UA had reasonably closed for a week. Giving Izuku time to handle some things, he needed to talk to his senseis. The halfling got out of bed with another stretch as he walked his way to his bathroom. After brushing his teeth and other hygienic things, he quietly made his way to his mother's room. He knocked once, then twice, but heard no response or even slight movement. Must have gone to work early. Izuku contemplated. With that, he made his way through his apartment until he arrived in his kitchen, where he promptly made a large meal fit for a Saiyan. After eating, he threw on his training guy and raised his index and middle finger to his head as he vanished into thin air. He appeared in the god world, its crisp air and luscious green fields the same as always. It was strange, whenever Izuku was here, he felt at peace. As if he left all his troubles behind. Oh, Izuku I wasn't expecting you a jovial voice called out to him. Izuku turned with a strained smile and rubbed the back of his head. Uh, yeah, I had some things I had to talk to you and Vegeta-sensei about Izuku informed. Goku noticed the strained smile on his student's face instantly. His usual ruffled hair was more ruffled if possible, his eyes had dark rings under them, indicating he had been having trouble sleeping, his fists were clenched so tightly, his knuckles started turning white. Something was wrong, something was bothering Izuku heavily. Goku simply nodded and waved his hand before clenching it into a fist. In less than a second, Vegeta appeared in his angel robes and his usual scowl. Accurate, this had better be good I was just getting started with cleaning Vegeta scowled. Goku only gave Vegeta a look, and Vegeta instantly got serious. Vegeta sighed and waved his hand as an indication for the two other Saiyans in the field to follow him. Eventually, they got to an area with a view of the beautiful and bright waterfall. The trio sat in a slight circle as the two gods awaited their green-haired student to speak. D during the USJ attack, when Nomu knocked me unconscious, I met someone. Izuku slowly explained. Goku raised his eyebrows in confusion, while Vegeta simply nodded, easing Izuku to continue. He said his name was Gohan, and he told me that that I was his reincarnation and that I'm half Saiyan because somehow our genes mixed. Izuku murmured tiredly. Honestly, ever since the attack ended, Izuku had only thought about two things. Momo and Gohan. Usually, he thought of Gohan and this whole reincarnation shit and eventually get frustrated and confused. He thought of the latter to calm himself down. Izuku looked up to see his sensei's reaction, more so Goku's. What met him when he looked into Goku's eyes was a mixture of emotions. Anger, sadness, happiness, etc. Are you sure, Izuku? Vegeta asked calmly. Izuku nodded, and Vegeta relaxed slightly. Goku suddenly stood up and rushed towards Izuku, before grabbing his face and staring into his eyes. A few seconds passed before tears slowly fell down Goku's face. H he's not lying, his kai it's the same as Gohan's I always wondered why you reminded me of him so much, Goku cried as he pulled Izuku into a tight hug. Ah, so this was what it felt like. A hug from a father figure, something Izuku hadn't felt since he was announced quirkless. That day was still something that affected Izuku deeply, but he pushed that aside and reveled in the warmth of a fatherly hug. The hug was interrupted as Vegeta coughed. Now that you seem to have gotten that off your chest, we need to talk about your performance during that attack, Vegeta stated. Izuku tensed up and started to sweat slightly. W well you see, the Nomu had some type of super regeneration, and it caught me off guard Izuku started, but was briefly stopped when he received a painful slap to the back of his head. His assaulter was none other than Vegeta, who glared at him disapprovingly. I'll tell you what happened, Vegeta said as he stood up and crossed his arms. You got arrogant something that I told you to avoid the moment you stepped foot in the chamber, Vegeta scolded. Izuku looked down in shame. It was true, he was aware of just how powerful he was compared to others. It wasn't every day that you could easily thrash the person you used to admire and worship. It gave Izuku a confidence boost, a huge one mind you. After years of being told that you're useless and a nobody, being able to now confidently say that he was one of the strongest people in the universe, it filled Izuku with warm confidence. You were arrogant, and that led to your downfall. Your downfall could have led to the death of your mate, all because you didn't follow your teachings. You always finish the fight as quickly as possible there have been far too many times where Kakakrit and I played around with our opponents and it came back to bite us in the ass. Vegeta recollected as he closed his eyes with a sigh. Izuku looked up to see the disappointment in Vegeta's eyes. Yet, there was also something there that made Izuku feel a little better about his scolding. There was worry in his sensei's eyes. Vegeta was, of course, prideful and expected better out of his student, but as time passed, he had grown a deeper connection to Izuku. 
with him, Kakarot, and the boy being the last remaining Saiyans, the Jedi had become quite fond of the last halfling. Maybe it was a king thing, holding on to the last of your subjects. Holding on to a dying race. After all, there were no more full-blooded Saiyan females to make another full-blooded Saiyan with. Vegeta brushed his hand through his hair in frustration and let out a deep sigh. It was strange. He hadn't had these thoughts in a while. He turned towards the boy, who looked like a beaten puppy and shook his head. Tomorrow, you are to be back here for intensive training. Obviously, I didn't beat my lessons into you hard enough. Do you understand? Vegeta asked sternly as he used his infamous glare. Izuku nodded rapidly as a small bead of sweat worked its way down his neck. Vegeta really scared him when he spoke of training. Honestly, he'd rather fight Nomu again. Anyways, I should be heading back to Earth. I need to pick up some more groceries for dinner tonight, Goku's mouth watered as he heard Izuku say that. Izuku rolled his eyes but had a smile on his face. I'll bring some leftovers for the both of you tomorrow, I promise, Izuku laughed. Goku smiled widely, and if you looked close enough, the corners of Vegeta's lips curled slightly. With that, Izuku disappeared with an instant transmission as Goku waved goodbye. The second Izuku entirely disappeared, Goku adopted a serious expression. Vegeta, I know you sensed it. He obtained Ultra Instinct. I thought he would bring it up, but it seems like he doesn't even remember using the form. When I grabbed his face, I searched his memories, and it didn't even pop up Goku explained. Vegeta rubbed his temples slowly as he thought of a theory. I would say that it's possible the form only awakens when he's near death, but I've seen times where the boy is merely doing a push-up and his eyes change. Perhaps he needs a final push like you were saying, though that could backfire and awaken his Akari powers instead. Vegeta guessed. Goku stood up as he brushed the grass of his guy pants and walked over to Vegeta. That form has repercussions Vegeta. That form is only supposed to be used by beings who have mastered God Kai for years. Then we better start getting him used to it, Vegeta finalized as he teleported away to finish the rest of the chores. Izuku stepped out of the grocery store and let out a sigh as the crisp night air blew against his skin. He had officially brought all of his groceries, which mind you was a lot as he carried around 50 bags, he began his walk towards his home, careful not to bump into anyone. He was so concentrated on not knocking into anyone that he didn't notice the loud footsteps until it was too late. A little girl crashed into Izuku and fell back on her rear with an eep. Izuku, feeling something, stopped with surprise and looked down at the girl. She had snow white hair and was covered in bandages of all kinds. She wore what seemed to be a tattered dress, and the most noticeable feature was the small horn that rested on the side of her head. Um, are you alright? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to my sides, Izuku apologized softly. The girl looked up in fear, but the footsteps that approached her from behind made her grab onto Izuku as if he were her lifeline. Izuku's eyes widened in surprise before he suddenly adopted a blank facade as the footsteps came to a stop. Eerie, it's rude to run into strangers. Apologize, and let's go home. The man reprimanded. Izuku noted that there seemed to be an undertone to the man's voice. Almost like he was warning her. Sorry, sir, my daughter just finished getting scolded and she didn't take too kindly to it. The man explained calmly. The girl's grip only tightened at this and Izuku's calm facade broke slightly as his face broke into a small frown. This man's Kai was just like any other human, but it was evil, dark. Oh, really? Izuku murmured. It was quiet for a few seconds before the man let out his killing intent, making the small girl shiver with fear. Her grip hesitantly lessened, and tears sprung to her eyes as she slowly stepped away from Izuku. Before she could run back to the man's side, Izuku grabbed the girl and pulled her behind him. Excuse me, sir, would you mind handing me my daughter, now? The man said, though his tone was demanding, and Izuku could tell he was getting irritated. Izuku let out his own killing intent, dwarfing the masked man's own. The man stepped back in slight fear, but held his facade. I told you to unhand my daughter. Izuku chuckled lowly, that's what I thought you said. Sorry, but I'm having a hard time believing this is your daughter. Why don't we take this to the police and then we can clear up this misunderstanding. The man's eyebrows furrowed at this and he took a step forward. Izuku slowly slid his right foot behind his other foot, getting into a slightly defensive stance. Eerie I won't repeat myself, get over here now the masked man yelled. Izuku smirked, this piece of shit was finally letting his true colors show. Izuku grabbed the small girl with one hand and placed her over his shoulder. But that, it seemed like the man calmed down considerably. Hein I guess I have to get a little dirty, the man muttered as he started putting on a pair of surgical gloves. At this, Izuku's eyes narrowed and he began to let his kaira eye slightly, causing the wind to somewhat revolve around him. The two had a stare down for a minute before the masked man slammed his hand on the ground, sending spikes made of stone his way. Izuku swiftly avoided to the side and flew to the top of the building. He gently put Eri down and smiled at her before he jumped off. 
The masked man barely had enough time to dodge as Izuku's fist barreled into the ground, causing a crater to form. Before I end your life tonight, I'd like to know your name, boy. The masked man requested. Izuku merely adopted the Saiyajin fighting style. It's rude to ask for someone's name without introducing yourself first, Izuku grunted, as his Kai kept rising. Ah, how rude of me my name is Kai Chisaki. Don't worry about any formality. You won't be alive long enough to remember it. Chisaki stated as he placed his hand on one of the alley walls, sending more spiked stones his way. Izuku simply swatted those to pieces and blitzed in to finish the fight quickly. As he was dashing in, he noticed when Chisaki touched a wall, it didn't turn into spikes immediately as he thought. It was disassembling and reassembling to create something sharper, Izuku quickly dodged a swipe Chisaki made at him and countered with a vicious kick to Chisaki's side, sending him crashing into the wall. Izuku let out a battle cry as he swung his fist at Chisaki, but the man simply touched the wall, sending out more spikes that forced Izuku to dodge. Izuku bent his body backwards and swept Chisaki off his feet with a sweep kick. As the man was falling, Izuku maneuvered his hands to return him to his feet and raised his leg to deliver an axe kick into his stomach that sent Chisaki crashing into the ground. Extreme Kai Manipulation. Reaper's Chains Izuku shouted as chains of Kai sprung from his back and wrapped around the seemingly unconscious Chisaki. Izuku let out a sigh and was about to reach for his phone before he heard something that sent his senses into overdrive. Shoot the girl. Izuku released his chains instantly and flew to Eerie with his full speed. He grabbed the girl and rolled out of the way just in time for a sniper bullet to hit the spot where Eerie was. Izuku growled and sent a Kai blast in the direction of the shot, unknowingly killing the sniper in the heat of battle. The sniper's skin burned away from the intense heat as he let out a gut-wrenching scream, not that Izuku heard, he was too focused on protecting Eri and finishing things with Hisaki. Izuku hopped down the building again to finish off Hisaki, but the man was gone. DCH, bucking coward, Izuku muttered. You um mister? A shy, quiet voice inquired. Izuku turned to see Eri looking on with slight fear, but she was a lot less frightened than she was earlier. Izuku looked surprised for a second before he got down on one knee, lowering himself to Eri's height. He let a soft smile grace his features as he grabbed Yuri's small pale hands, causing her to look up at him with fear. Sorry, you had to see that, Yuri. But you don't have to be scared anymore the bad man is gone Izuku reassured. Yuri's face became one of surprise before she stared into Izuku's emerald eyes, searching for any sign of deceit. After about 30 seconds, tears started to well up in her ruby-colored eyes as her grip on Izuku's hand tightened. You mean it is he really gone? He won't hurt me anymore? Eerie questioned frantically as tears poured down her chubby cheeks. Izuku pulled the girl into a hug and felt her stiffen before she relaxed. I promise you, Eerie, that man won't ever touch you again, Izuku smiled largely. That was it, that's all it took for Eerie to throw her arms around Izuku's neck and wail loudly. Izuku held the trembling girl and closed his eyes. What kind of sick bastard would hurt such an innocent girl like this? The girl cried for about 10 minutes before Izuku felt her breathing slow considerably, meaning she fell asleep. Ah, she's asleep. Guess I'll let her rest at home and look for her parents tomorrow. Izuku planned as he stood up and cradled the small snowflake against his chest. A strange sensation entered his body as he looked down at the sleeping girl. Her now rosy cheek stained with tears. He couldn't describe it, but he knew that he wanted to protect this girl with everything he had. On that day, Izuku swore that nobody would ever touch a single hair on her head. Izuku stepped through his door, trying to enter as quietly as possible. The girl in his arms had been soft snoring the whole way home, and Izuku was happy she was able to finally rest peacefully. His happy thoughts were cut off as the light flicked on, and one Mama Inko stood in front of him, giving him a stern motherly look. Izuku nervously laughed as he adjusted the small snowflake to rub the back of his head. Um, hey, mom so this is Iri Izuku muttered. The stern look he was receiving wasn't lessening, causing Izuku to shrink more and more. Goku-sensei was right, strong woman was a Saiyan's weaknesses. After overcoming the glare of the gods, Izuku explained the situation, during which Iri woke up. She looked around frantically but calmed down once she realized Izuku was holding her. So let me get this straight. After grocery shopping, Iri crashed into you. After that, you battled an S-rank villain, beat him, and then brought Iri here instead of the police station. Inko reviewed. Izuku and Iri looked at each other and then simultaneously looked at Inko with a smile. Yup that sounds about right Izuku beamed. Are you out of your mind? Izuku yelped and fell back, pulling Eerie with him, which caused her to let out a cute eep. He had awoken the wrath of his mother. Do you know how dangerous that was? What if he killed you? What if you weren't fast enough to save Eerie? Inko scolded as tears slowly escaped her emerald eyes. Izuku felt guilty, making his mother worry about him always did. Izuku gently put Eerie down before he walked over to his mother and pulled her into a hug. I'm sorry, mom I know it was dangerous, but you know me. 
If I see someone in trouble, I have to help them, Inko quietly laughed as she wiped the tears from her eyes. Yes, I suppose that you were always like that. Inko chuckled. Hey, now I've heard that it's a great trait to have. The two green-haired cinnamon rolls laughed as Eerie looked on in confusion. Yet, seeing her savior laugh and smile put a warm feeling in her chest. It was foreign, something she hadn't felt in a long time. I think people call this happiness. Inko looked over at Eerie, who was deep in thought. She kneeled in front of the girl and gently grabbed her dainty hands. Eerie Chan, do you know where your parents are? Eerie looked up in surprise before a solemn look came upon her face. She slowly shook her head. Well, that decides that you'll be staying with us. Inko smiled. Eerie's eyes widened widely as she heard that. Were they joking? Was this another dream? Was she just going to wake up back in that lab strapped to a chair? The sound of her savior's voice brought her out of her dark thoughts. Eerie, you're safe now. Welcome home Izuku beamed. For the second time that night, tears escaped Yuri's eyes as she engulfed Izuku into a tight hug. Are you out of your mind? Izuku pulled his ear away from his phone in pain as one Momo Yayoi Rozu scolded him on the other line. This feels familiar Izuku thought with amusement. Now now Momo, I couldn't just leave her there. She was practically asking for me to kick overhauls ass Momo giggled on the other side, her anger at the halfling waning slightly. Hein, I guess since you beat him with no injuries, I can't get too angry. By the way, Izuku see could I ask a favor from you? Momo stuttered. Huh? Is she stuttering? Momo barely does something like that. Sure, princess what do you need? Izuku smiled. I want you to train me Momo declared. Izuku was silent for a few seconds before he realized what she said. W what? You want me to train you? But why? At USJ, I watched you and our classmates come close to death. I felt useless, not able to make a difference in the fight. During that fight, you lost your arm protecting me, I want to be ready to fight by your side and not always be protected by you. The power you displayed was nothing short of spectacular I know that under your guidance, I can become a better hero so please, Izuku Momo explained. Izuku thought about this for a few seconds before sighing. Of course I'll train you, Momo. But I'll have you know it won't be easy, you'll most likely hate me during this. Izuku said. Thank you, Izuku I won't let you down, I promise. Momo cheered. Though at hearing the last part, she giggled quietly to herself. Oh, Aizu, I could never hate you. I love you way too much for that Momo expressed. Class 1 idly talked until their supposed substitute arrived. To their surprise, Azawa walked through the door, but on top of that, he looked perfectly healed Azawa sensei, you're here you look perfectly fine, but how? Mina Ishido asked in excitement and relief. I'm not too sure myself, I was pretty sure I had a broken rib and jaw, but when I woke up from being knocked out from Nomu, I was perfectly fine. Azawa explained. But enough about that, the first thing we'll be talking about is the upcoming sports festival. At this, the class erupted into cheers of excitement, yet some were slightly worried. Azawa sensei, isn't it kind of unsafe to have the sports festival right after a villain attack? Achako asked worryingly. That's exactly why we're holding them so soon. We're going to show the villains that UA won't be rattled from an attack like that. We're showing our strength and that we won't back down from the fight. At this, the class was filled with an aura of determination. That being said, I expect each and every one of you to give it your all and go beyond as always started. Plus Ultra the class roared. The man sat in a fancy restaurant, sipping on wine as he looked out the window reflectively. His phone rang once, then twice before he picked it up with a simple hello. The voice on the other line spoke, and a smirk appeared on the man's features as the conversation carried on. I see our interests somewhat align Mr. One. Why don't we schedule a meeting so we may discuss these plans for the future? All right then, a pleasure doing business with you. The man smiled. He hung up the phone before taking one last sip of his wine and beginning to leave. It seems everything is starting to unravel. Please, don't disappoint me, Izuku Midoriya. Name? Izuku Midoriya. Race? Half human half Saiyan. Our levels? Base? 9 billion, 600 million. Primal? Base? 11 billion. Super Saiyan? 480 billion. Super Saiyan 2? 960 billion. Super Saiyan 3? 300 trillion and 840 billion. Initial Ultra Instinct? 67 septillion, 500 hextillion. Quirk? Extreme Kai Manipulation? allows the user to have ungodly control of their Kai. The user can create most things using Kai and can use Kai to enhance healing. Drawback. If a user uses it for an hour straight, they lose the ability to use Kai for an hour. Name. Kai Chisaki. Race. Human. Hour level. 50,000. Quirk. Overhaul. Name. Eerie. Race. Human. Hour level. 1,500 depends on emotion. Can shoot up to 75,000. Quirk. Rewind. Name. Sun Gohan. Race. Half Saiyan, our levels, base, 600 billion, ultimate form, suppressed, 5.3 trillion, ultimate form, 
500 trillion, name, Momo Yeoi Rozu, race, human, power level, 2000, quirk, creation, name, as always Shoda, race, human, power level, 7000, quirk, erasure, name, Son Goku, race, Saiyan God, power level, quirk, quirkless, name, Vegeta Briefs, race, Saiyan Angel, power levels, base Mui, 20 octillion, 500 septillion, quirk, quirkless, chapter 14, training for the festival, Izuku smiled as he watched Momo pant heavily on the floor, sweat from their activities covering her body, the training they were doing was quite intense, after all, now now, Momo, running out of energy, Izuku teased as he hopped from foot to foot, Momo wiped the sweat off of her head before a smile graced her features, not at all, Izuku sensei Momo replied as she spun her staff and got into a battle position. Izuku smirked and did the same before they were at a standoff. Momo charged in and swung her staff out, making contact with Izuku's yai. Izuku pushed off and switched his grip to one hand as he slammed yai down, vertically smashing into the ground. Unfortunately, Momo dodged and countered by thrusting the staff towards Izuku's temple. The halfing swiftly righted his pole and pushed forward, deflecting the staff and entering Momo's guard. Izuku swung out with a fist, only to have Momo create another pole instantly, blocking his fist. Good, good you're learning to create quickly while amid battle Izuku complimented. Momo smiled as she dropped her staff, knowing Hat was coming next. Let's see how you're doing with hand-to-hand -hand combat, though Izuku suddenly yelled as he charged in. The two met in the middle, and Izuku blocked a high kick from Momo, he leaned back as a punch followed and gently pushed Momo's stomach, causing her to stagger back. You're fast and smaller than I am Momo, use that to your advantage. Being too aggressive can lead to your downfall. Control your excitement and think before you attack. Izuku explained. Momo nodded as she let out a breath and analyzed Izuku. He stood in a relaxed stance that purposely left open spots. Though most people fighting would try to take advantage of this, Momo learned the hard way that those open spots were a trap. Momo deciding on her plan, dashed in and went for a low kick that Izuku blocked by raising his leg. Keeping up the momentum, Momo went for another low kick to the other leg, causing Izuku to backflip off his last leg. As he landed, Momo threw quick punches that Izuku either dodged or slapped away. Izuku threw out a lazy punch that Momo ducked under and countered with a straight jab to the stomach. Izuku smiled inside his head, she was a rapid learner. Izuku stepped back as Momo let out a fury of kicks, making him rapidly move his head to dodge. She exhaled as she spun and delivered a swift kick to Izuku's gut, actually catching him off guard. Izuku quickly recovered and swept Momo off her feet, knocking her to the ground. Before she could recover as well, Izuku had his hand at her neck, his hands as straight as a blade. Do you give up? Momo sighed but nodded. The green-haired Saiyan chuckled and helped the girl up. Good job Momo I can tell you that you've improved in these past two weeks we've got about two more days before the sports festival, anything you think you need to work on? Izuku asked as he handed her a towel. If I had to say anything, it would be just to brush up on my close combat and fix my weak points. On top of that, the staff can only get me so far Momo considered. Izuku closed his eyes in deep thought when an idea popped into his head. Before he could tell the ravenette his bright idea, his phone went off. Yello. Yo, Izu bro we still up for today's training. Kirishima asked. Oh yeah, for sure, man I'll meet you the dojo soon, is Ajiro already there? Yup just called him before you, bro. Alright then, Red, see you soon Izuku smiled. Izuku hung up the phone, only to spot a pouting Momo. Is there a problem, princess? Izuku chuckled. Momo simply mock glared at the teen. Those two are taking away from my Izu time Momo pouted. The Saiyan laughed before pulling Momo into a gentle hug. How about we watch a movie tonight? You can pick. Momo snuggled closer to Izuku and smiled brightly. The sight made Izuku's heart thud, causing him to blush. Oh, what's this? Is the mighty Izuku blushing like a schoolgirl? Momo teased. Izuku rolled his eyes through Momo over his shoulder, causing her to giggle before he flew off into the sky to drop her off. Izuku entered the dojo and sighed as the cold air from the AC blew onto him. He smiled once he saw Ajiro and Kirishima warming up in the boxing ring. Yo Izuku called out with a smile. Ajiro and Kirishima stopped their workout as they greeted their green-haired friend. Izuku noticed that the two were ready for an intense sparring session today. Ajiro wore his traditional white training guy. Kirishima simply wore black combat pants and boots, with a red vest. Hope you guys didn't start without me. Of course not Izu bro let's get started, I've got some things I want to work on. We doing 1v1s or free for all? Kirishima asked. Let's do ones today. Ajiro, wanna go first? Izuku implored with a smirk. The chance to fight the legendary turtle hermit style. You're on Ajiro cheered. Izuku smiled and fist bumped Kirishima as he entered the ring. He closed his eyes as he lowered his kai to Ajiro's level and got into his fighting stance. 
Hand to hand only no quirks, though you can use your tail since it's a part of you. Izuku explained. Ajiro nodded and took his stance, one that Izuku had to admit was impressive. The two martial artists stared each other down, not daring to make a move and create an opening for the other. Izuku smirked as Ajiro decided to go on the offensive and dashed in quickly. Ajiro swung out with a backhanded fist that Izuku caught. Not letting that slow him down, Ajiro used his tail to catch Izuku off guard. Izuku simply stepped back and launched a series of kicks that Ajiro blocked before he countered with some of his own. Izuku quickly swerved through each hit and delivered a jab to Ajiro's stomach, causing him to grunt. The blonde grabbed his opponent's guy top and delivered a judo slam that sent Izuku into the ground. Thinking fast, Izuku grabbed onto Ajiro's arm and wrapped his legs around the arm as well. With some force, Izuku rolled forward, pulling Ajiro with him. Izuku's opponent slammed into the mat but used his tail to push himself back up quickly. Wow, that was some quick thinking there, Izuku. Ajiro complimented as he bounced on his feet. Izuku smiled as he recovered from the ground and adopted his quicker fighting style. How about we pick things up a little, Ajiro-chan? Izuku provoked with a smile. Ajiro smirked back before he dashed at Izuku once again. Ajiro spun in the air and threw out a full arc kick that Izuku ducked under. The green-haired boy retaliated by throwing an uppercut that Ajiro smacked aside. Izuku, using the smack's momentum, spun his body to elbow his opponent. Ajiro caught the elbow and threw one of his own that was also captured. The two teams were in a standstill as they pushed against the other. Izuku getting an idea, let Ajiro win the deadlock, falling back as he did so. Ajiro, being off balance, fell forward but quickly used his tail to catch himself. While Izuku was falling, the blonde took his chance and threw out a Brazilian kick that arched downwards towards the falling teen. Izuku grabbed Ajiro's ankle and spun, sending them both to the ground. There, Izuku used his hands to turn while throwing out ferocious kicks that Ajiro blocked. Ajiro tried to gain distance from the spiral of kicks, but Izuku wasn't going to let him get the chance. Izuku dashed and started throwing quick jabs that Ajiro could either block or dodge. When Izuku sent a harder jab that went flying over Ajiro's shoulder, the teen delivered a body shot that sent Izuku reeling back. Ajiro charged in while Izuku recovered, and the two exchanged blows, all that were blocked and dodged. Though both the teens were in an intense bar, the two martial artists couldn't help but smile widely. Izuku moved his head to the right as another punch flew at him and slapped the next one away, opening up Ajiro's defenses. Using the opportunity, Izuku delivered a devastating backhand fist to the teen's cheek, sending him flying back. This is my chance to end things Izuku determined. He charged in, and when Ajiro started to throw out quick punches, Izuku knew he had this win. He quickly slapped two of the hits away and waited for Ajiro to throw a cross eventually. When he did, Izuku ducked under the kick and spun, driving his heel into Ajiro's jaw, sending the boy crashing into the mat. Izuku let out a deep breath as he felt the sweat slowly trickle down his forehead. That was one of the most intense spars he had had in a while. The sparring with Goku and Vegeta didn't count, since it consisted of teaching him how to handle different fighting situations. Izuku offered Ajiro his hand, which the boy gratefully took with a smile. The two teens bowed at each other before they exited the ring to talk to their gaping red-haired friend. Bros that was amazing it was like watching an intense action movie, you guys are insane, Kirishima yelled. The two martial artists smiled as they accepted the compliment. Thank you they both said. Alright, that's got me pumped up, Kirishima said as he used his quirk to harden as much as he could dot Izuku, you know what to do. Izuku smiled as he raised his kai just slightly above Kirishima's. The goal of this was to increase Kirishima's durability, as Izuku wailed on him with his super strength. Yash come at me, Izuku. Hi. Izuku yawned as he stepped through the door to his home. Aizu a cute voice yelled out as it barreled into Izuku. Izuku grabbed the figure and spun around, causing the voice to let out a sweet series of giggles. Well, hello, there, Iri-chan how are you today? Izuku laughed. Iri smiled, I'm great Aizu I helped make cookies today, Izuku smiled as he patted the girl's head, causing her to smile and blush. Well, I can't wait to try them. Izuku, dear, welcome home Inko called from the kitchen. Izuku smiled as he hugged his mother gently, hey mom, how was your day? Inko pulled back from the hug and smiled as well as she closed her eyes in contemplation. It was pretty fun eerie, and I spent the day shopping for new clothes for her, as well as baking some things. It was at this time Izuku noticed that Iri was wearing a new dress. She saw and spun around to show off, causing Izuku to chuckle. Do you like my dress Izu? The lady said it brings out my eyes or something, Iri said with childish excitement. Izuku laughed heartily, yes, Iri, the dress makes you look super cute. Inko smiled as she looked at the scene, but quickly went back to her motherly ways. Alright, you two, dinner will get cold, so go sit down and eat. Hi, two voices replied. Now, it's time for some personal training. Izuku stared at the filthy beach once known to be a beautiful sight. 
It was a place that Izuku used to go when the bullying became too much when he needed an escape from the hell that was his life. Izuku had decided two weeks ago that for his training, he was going to clean this beach. All of it. Though with Izuku's powers, he could quickly just disintegrate all the trash with a simple Kai Blast. But to make this harder, Izuku decided he would not only not use Kai Blast, but not use his Kai at all. He would move every item by hand, something that would build up his physical endurance and strength. But, that wasn't enough for the Saiyan, his blood thrived for more intense training, a more intense challenge. That's where a little gift from Vegeta and Goku Sensei kicked in. Izuku looked down at his wrist that now held a watch that had three buttons on it. One was for the instant materialization of his hero costume. Something that Izuku had yet to try, but was extremely thankful for the second was what Izuku needed at the moment. It was an invention of some kind that altered the gravity of the wearer. Meaning, Izuku could put the gravity to insane levels and use it to train while he cleaned the beach. The third was a button that Izuku liked to call, the no-no button. It was a button that Vegeta Sensei threatened never to touch unless absolutely necessary. The glare he had received after that instantly got rid of any curiosity and replaced it with fear. Izuku began stretching as he loosened his body for the strain that was surely about to come out of this. He grinned with determination as he pressed the button a few times, causing his gravity to shift to the exact number of 2000. Izuku immediately collapsed to his knees as the strain overcame him, and sweat poured down his forehead as he struggled to stand back up. When he finally righted himself, he let a broad smile out. In no time at all, Izuku was in intense training. He practiced katas until he could do them in his sleep, he lifted cars, refrigerators, and all kinds of metals into a pile, and also did physical training, such as push-ups, sit-ups, etc. By the time Izuku finished moving the trash, it was around midnight. Alright, time for my final training. Izuku thought as he disabled his gravity on his watch and sat in a meditative position in the sand. Izuku calmly breathed before he suddenly let his mind go blank. A few minutes later, a heat aura began to surround Izuku as his hair flowed. He held this for about 10 seconds before it faded, and Izuku fell back in exhaustion. Ah damn it, that form is harder to attain than Super Saiyan God Izuku growled in agitation. So you have yet to access the God forms, huh? This should be easier than I expected. Izuku immediately shifted himself, so he was standing in a defensive stance towards the voice. There stood a man with a hooded cloak that covered his features. He wore all black clothes, including a sleeveless muscle shirt with combat pants and boots. On his hip, he had a katana, as well as two more crossed on his back. It was then that Izuku sensed his kai. This is one of the strange kais I sensed at USJ. Izuku immediately pressed a button on his watch, bringing out his hero costume, as well as his senzu bean pouch and yai. Who exactly are you? You don't seem to have good intentions, Izuku questioned as he slid a bean into his mouth. He immediately felt his sore muscles and cuts heal. I've been sent to test you in a more personal matter. My name isn't important. Don't disappoint me, Izuku Midoriya he yelled as he lunged at Izuku. Izuku immediately blocked the attack but was surprisingly sent back. Izuku flipped and landed on his feet before he dashed in to meet the mysterious man in a clash. The two fighters pushed against each other, but eventually, Izuku was overpowered. The man slammed Izuku into the ground before he kicked the green-haired Saiyan in the ribs, sending him gliding along the sandy floors. Dch, I have to say, I'm quite disappointed. I've heard such good things about you. The man mocked. Izuku wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth while he glared at the cloaked figure, let's see how long you can keep talking shit. Izuku clenched his fist at his sides as he built up his kai for a massive explosion of power. Soon his hair stood spiker, a golden aura surrounded him as well as green lightning. Izuku was now in his Super Saiyan 2 form. Izuku dashed in and spun before throwing a high kick that the man blocked with a grunt. The man went for a punch that Izuku slapped away, and the two began to exchange blows. Each blow caused the sand to flutter wildly around the two warriors, creating a crater with every hit. Eventually, Izuku ducked under a cross that left the man open for a hard uppercut to the stomach. The man coughed up blood but smiled as he put his hands together above his head, bringing it down to the back of Izuku's head. Izuku's vision went blurry for a few seconds, but he recovered and dug his hands into the sand as he arched his body so his legs wrapped around the man's neck. With a yell, Izuku pulled off a hurricane rana, sending the man sprawling on his back. The halfling Super Saiyan quickly got in the top mount position and began raining down punches on the man who could barely block the onslaught. Izuku was suddenly blown off as a huge gust of wind blew from the man. Izuku flipped so he landed on his one knee. He looked at the cloaked man as he slowly got up, but something wasn't right. Izuku couldn't sense his Kai. Shit, that's God Kai I haven't mastered that Izuku panicked. The man, whose eyes were now slightly revealed glared at Izuku before he closed them for a few seconds. He opened them and then turned around as his cloak flowed in the wind. It seems that our time here is done Izuku Midoriya. 
Next time, we'll finish things the man stated before he disappeared with a snap. Izuku glared at the spot for a while before he dropped his transformation and pit his index and middle finger to his head, preparing for teleportation. Goku and Vegeta-sensei had to know about this. Name? Cloaked man. Race? Unknown. Hour level. Base form. 980 billion. Odd form. 900 quadrillion. Quirk. Chapter 15. UA Sports Festival, Part 1. The day was the day of the UA Sports Festival. Izuku stretched as he awoke from his slumber, his eyelids felt heavy, and the loud blaring of his alarm clock was starting to get annoying. With a grunt, Izuku slammed his hand down on the alarm clock, smashing it to nothing but a heap of mechanical parts. Oh god damn it that's the fifth one this month Izuku swore. He grumbled as he got up from the bed and walked to the bathroom to get ready for the day. It wasn't until he washed his face that he realized what day it was today. Oh shit the festivals today Izuku yelled with excitement, his face still soaked. Izuku, language Inko yelled angrily from the kitchen. Izuku flinched slightly at his mother's voice. She was scary when she was mad. Izuku speedily finished getting ready, put on his UA gym uniform, and rushed to eat the enormous breakfast his mother was now accustomed to making. His fast-paced eating caused Iri to giggle cutely, which caused Izuku to blush. He finished his breakfast with speed and kissed his mother and Iri on the forehead before he rushed out. When Izuku arrived at his classroom, he saw the rest of his class all wearing the same gym uniform. Some looked nervous, others excited, some a combination of both. Yo, Izubro Kirishima yelled with a smile as he ran over. Izuku smiled as the two fists bumped. Over the past two weeks, he, Ajiro, and Kirishima had become great friends and training partners. To Izuku, it was nice. Ever since he had been announced as quirkless, he had lost all his friends. Even the ones he thought he had gained were faker were just making fun of him. Hey, Kirishima, you ready for today? Izuku asked with a smirk. Kirishima hardened his arms for a second with a broad smile on his face. Are you kidding? I'm excited this festival is going to be so manly Kirishima cheered. His excitement caused Izuku to grin widely. He took this time to look around for his princess and spotted her talking to Todoroki. This naturally caused Izuku to frown slightly. His eyes flashed red before they returned to their emerald green. Momo glanced over at Izuku before a broad smile graced her features, and she ran at the halfling. She collided into him, causing Izuku to grunt, but he still held her tightly. He looked up from the hug to see Todoroki glaring at him. Izuku smirked, and unknowingly, his eyes flashed red, causing Todoroki to flinch and look away. That's what I thought pussy. The dark voice laughed in his mind. His dark thoughts were interrupted as he felt his cheek getting pulled by a pouting Momo. Izukun, are you paying attention to me? Izuku smiled softly and caressed her cheek, causing her to blush a pretty red. Sorry about that, princess. Are you ready for the festival? Momo shook her head slightly, trying to rid herself of her blush, which didn't work. Yeah, I think I'm ready you got me pretty prepared for this. I only guided you. You put in the hard work. Izuku grinned. Momo sighed before she reached up and softly kissed Izuku's cheek. The green-haired Saiyan blushed furiously, causing Momo to let out a giggle. The two lovebirds were so enthralled in their moment, they didn't notice the stares of their classmates. Two of them being jealous. The moment was interrupted as Azawa walked in looking tired as always, yet he had a slightly determined look on his face. Settle down class. I hope you're all prepared for the challenge ahead. I warn you, just because you're the top class, doesn't mean you can't be defeated. With my P said, be at the stadium within 10 minutes. Azawa finished as he walked out of the classroom. The class aura became determined as class 1 made their way to the stadium. Class 1 is silently prepared for the upcoming challenge. The room was tense as each student did their own thing to prepare. Momo ate cinnamon buns ferociously, almost swallowing them as fast as she was making them. He eat a muttered to himself while robotically waving his arms. Bakugo, for the first time in his life, was silent as he stared at a wall in concentration. Izuku decided to take the Goku route and meditated next to Momo. It was silent for a few more minutes before the speaker blared to life. All right students, please report to the tunnels when I call your class, please walk out to the middle field present Mick yelled. Class 1 made their way to the tunnel, and soon enough, the other classes joined. Izuku took the time to scout out his future competitors, only to notice that the other classes were glaring at his. Soon enough, the rest of class 1 noticed, but decided not to say anything. Well, all except the explosive blonde. What the hell are you extras glaring at, huh? This caused the other classes to glare harder, though some averted their eyes from Momo's direction when they saw the red-eyed demon glaring back at them. Iida reprimanded Bakugo, but the teen didn't seem to care, causing more malice in their direction. That dumbass needs to get kidnapped or something, maybe that'll shut him up. Izuku chuckled. And now, introducing the class at the top, the ones who fraud off villains in their first week and the best freshman at UA, Class 1A present Mick announced dramatically. With that, Class 1A walked out to be met with loud cheers from the audience. 
It was deafening, but Izuku kept his composure despite his Saiyan genetics screaming for relief. And now for class 1B then, classes C, D, E, F, and G and the rest present Mick once again announced. The classes walked out, but Izuku could tell they were upset, and once again, they all glared at class 1A. Our referee for this year will be the pro R-rated hero, Midnight present Mick yelled. Midnight hexily strutted up to the stage, causing almost every male teen from the classes to swoon, as well as most males in the audience. The only exception was, of course, Izuku, his Saiyan instincts already deciding who he belonged to. Itsuki add Todoroki because they were too focused on the challenge ahead of them. Iida as well, though the robotic boy still had a slight blush. Momo looked over at Izuku, ready to reprimand him for staring at midnight, but was surprised to find him instead of looking at the sky with a contemplative look on his face. Momo shook him until he snapped out of his daze. Izuku, are you okay? You were just staring off into space. Momo asked worryingly. Izuku laughed and patted her head, causing her to squirm in slight happiness. Yeah, sorry I was just thinking of what I was going to have for lunch, Izuku chuckled. Momo sweat dropped but couldn't help but let out a small smile. Of course, Izuku wouldn't be staring at her, but thinking of food. Though, if I'm not careful, someone could come and snatch him up. I have to make my move and soon Momo fretted. Midnight announced the event and explained the instructions before she asked Izuku to come up to the stage. And now, for the freshman representative who scored the most points in UA history for the entrance exam, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku walked up to the stage as the audience and students murmured about the green-haired boy. Izuku stared at the mic for a few seconds before his eyes changed to red, giving some students light PTSD flashbacks. None of you can beat me, Izuku started, only to get cut off from the booze of the other classes. Momo looked up at Izuku with slight disappointment, but smiled when he winked at her. As I was saying none of you can beat me. Why? because instead of focusing on other stuff, I'm fully dedicated to winning this thing. So I say this to the other classes, who cares if you're not a part of class 1A. You're still training to be a hero in the best hero school in the nation, if you think you can beat me, then I challenge you to try but know this. Izuku finished as the wind blew around him, his red eyes seeming to glow ominously. I won't go down without one hell of a fight, but that, the audience cheered loudly. Izuku smiled as his eyes turned back to its natural green color. To his glee, he noticed that every class, including his, looked determined as hell. Good, I need a good challenge snapping out of his thoughts, he noticed the classes getting lined up at the tunnel. It was mainly an obstacle course, one that had multiple robots, traps, and of course, obstacles. The timer started, and Izuku simply leaned against one of the walls in the tunnels. Once the timer hit zero, present Mick yelled for the students to start. Each student ran for the tunnel, but Todoroki beat them to it, freezing the tunnel so nobody could pass. Eventually, Bakugo blasted the iceberg to smithereens, and the race was on. It was then that the audience noticed that Izuku hadn't moved. He was simply leaning against the wall, his eyes closed. The other students ran into giant robots, but one was quickly destroyed by Kirishima, who punched through it with no effort. Another one was destroyed by Momo, who used her quirk to create a cannon to blast right through it. Though, she had to open up her shirt to do so. At this point, Todoroki was in first, while Bakugo was in second, but hot on Todoroki's ass. Pause. In third place was a girl in class 1B by the name of Ibarra Shiazaki. It was when the students got to the canyon that Izuku moved. He stretched dramatically before smiling and winking at the cameras. He slowly hovered off the ground before flying off so fast that he left a crater behind. He flew past the robots and over the canyon, but not before flying by Bakugo and smacking him in the back of the head and flying off. As he passed Odoroki, he could see him glare at him with hatred. Izuku simply flicked him off. With only 15 seconds, Izuku arrived at the tunnel and walked in, only to be met with silence. The audience was in disbelief, as well as the teachers who hadn't seen how powerful Izuku indeed was. Um, aren't you supposed to announce something? Izuku asked Midnight with a smile. Midnight blushed in embarrassment, but before she could announce anything, present Mick beat her to the chase. And in first place in an astounding 15 seconds, Izuku Midoriya. This broke the audience out of their shock, and they cheered loudly as Izuku smiled, rubbing the back of his head. The students in the obstacle course were shocked, some slightly scared. There was no way that one student had that much speed and power determined not to be shown out, everyone kicked it into overdrive. Izuku decided to watch his love interest and was surprised to see her moving slowly, almost as if she were being weighed down. Izuku squinted and what he saw made his Saiyan blood go wild. Hanging on to Momo's ass was that damn grapist Mineta. With a growl, Izuku sped off faster than he had before, arriving at the minefield where Momo was struggling. Momo, stay still, Izuku commanded. Momo, hearing the edge in his voice, could only nod and followed instructions. 
Izuku walked around Momo, and as he thought, the grapist was hanging on to her ass lustfully, drool pouring out of his mouth, his eyes closed in appreciation. What further angered Izuku was the fact that Momo was trembling with fear. I thought I told you what would happen the next time I caught you doing shit like this. Especially with my Momo, Izuku growled, his eyes a burning red color. Mineta froze, then sweat started pouring down his forehead at a rapid rate. He decided to do something risky that could get him killed or buy him time. Don't touch me if you pull me off, my balls will stick and pull her clothes with me, Mineta challenged with a sick grin. His grin was wiped off his face when he, along with Momo's pants, were pulled off quickly by Izuku. I don't fucking care. Izuku emotionlessly whispered. With a quick movement, Izuku ripped off his top gym uniform and wrapped it around Momo's hips, covering her from prying eyes. Before the grapist could run, Izuku grabbed the back of his head and drove it into the dirt, knocking him out instantly. He then delivered a rib-shattering kick to the downed grapist, sending him flying back to the tunnel where the obstacle first started. Izuku turned to Momo to see her staring up at him, her gray eyes clouded with unshed tears. The Kugo and Todoroki are neck and neck in the final tunnel who will take first place, now that Izuku has went back in. Present Mick yelled. Izuku thinking quickly picked Momo up bridal style and took off towards the center stage. With his primal form taking over, Izuku's speed was only enhanced as he blew past Bakugo and Todoroki, sending them crashing into the tunnel walls. Izuku landed in the middle once again, but this time with a blushing Momo, who buried her face in the crook of his neck. Back in first place is Izuku Midoriya, followed by Momo Yayoi Rozu the crowd went wild, cheering loudly and clapping. Though, that might have had something to do with what Izuku had just done. Izuku gently set Momo down and smiled at her, though he noticed she still seemed shaken up. Momo, can you stand still for me again, please? Izuku kindly asked. She nodded, though she still looked dazed as if she wasn't even here. Gotta thank Grandpa Piccolo for this one. Thanks, Gohan. Clothes beam Izuku yelled. Momo was covered in a green light, and moments later, she stood there with a new gym uniform. She smiled slightly, but she still seemed sad. Ah damn, what do I do I got it Izuku pulled Momo into a sincere and deep hug, which caused her to stiffen, but a few seconds later, she tightly gripped onto Izuku sobbing into his shoulder. Oku-sensei was right, hugs are nice Izuku thought happily. It's okay, Momo. Cry as much as you need to. It doesn't make you weak. I'll always be here for you, I promise. Izuku whispered reassuringly. Momo only clung onto him tighter, almost as if he would disappear if she let go. After a few seconds, she pulled away and smiled at Izuku lovingly. If we weren't in front of all these people and on live TV, I would definitely be making out with you right now. Momo flirted. Howard Izuku laughed. Momo laughed as well before she stood on her toes and softly pecked Izuku on the lips. That'll have to do for now. She smiled. Izuku grinned as well, though it was then that he noticed the death glares and evil smiles he was receiving. He raised his eyebrow and saw that Midnight was pointing at him, he looked at the board and froze. There in first place was his name on the board, and next to it was his 10 million points. Ah, look. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Race. Half Saiyan. Our level. Unknown after training, yet to be revealed. Work. Extreme Kai Manipulation. Name. Momo Yaoi Rozu. Race. Human. Our level. 4000. Work. Creation. Name. Kirishima Ijiro. Race. Human. Our level. 4200. Work. Hardening. Name. Kitsuki Bakugo. Race. Human. Our level. 5100. Work. Explosion. Name. Todoroki Shoto, race. Human. Our level. 4900. Ice only. Work. Half cold, half hot. Name. Minoru Mineta, race. Human. Our level. 1300. Work. Pop off. Chapter 16. UA Sports Festival, Part 2. Goku panted in exhaustion as he held his damaged stomach. He looked around the battlefield to see Vegeta still fighting the enemy, but losing horribly. Goku grunted as he stood up painfully, blood dripping from his mouth and wound. He heard a cry of agony as Vegeta came spiraling into the ground roughly, his arm snapping upon impact, and his white hair fading back to its black. B Vegeta Goku shouted with fear. The Saiyan made his way slowly to the downed prince and sighed in relief as he saw Vegeta shuffling. They had been fighting this opponent for an hour straight, and it seemed like every time they got stronger, so did their opponent. Not even mastered Ultra Instinct could beat him, dark chuckling brought Goku out of his thoughts to see the figure floating in the sky. I have to say, I'm quite dissatisfied. I heard that this universe had the strongest warriors, yet I've beaten you around like children. The figure chuckled. Vegeta growled as he held his broken arm and glared. Accurate, as much as I hate to say this. I think we need fusion to beat him. We keep getting stronger, but so does he we need something that will overpower him so much he can't catch up. Mastered Ultra Instinct on top of our fusion should put him away. Vegeta explained quickly. 
Goku nodded, but the next words from the figure caused his heart to stop momentarily. If you think I'll let you two perform the fusion dance of the Kais, you're sorely mistaken. The figure calmly declared as he dashed in at unfathomable speeds. The figure was then intercepted by a man in an orange guy and spiky black hair, with a single bang hanging on his forehead. His clothes were tattered and ripped. Dry blood caked his skin, and you could see the clear fatigue on his face. But in his dark midnight eyes was pure determination. Gohin Goku beamed. Gohin nodded and faced towards his opponent before he roared as his Kai skyrocketed, his midnight black hair shifted to a glowing red as well as his eyes. His muscle mass decreased slightly, and his Kai became fiery. The Super Saiyan God transformation was complete. That started with a dance, Dad will hold him off Gohin yelled as he charged in. Gohin delivered a significant blow to the figure's jaw, sending him staggering back in the air. Before the figure could recover, Gohin launched while spinning to deliver a destructive kick to the neck. The figure snarled and pulled Gohin close by the tatters of his guy, smashing his elbow into the half Saiyan's nose. Gohin disoriented, couldn't counter the kick to the stomach that caused him to cough up some blood. Boo, Goku and Vegeta started as they began the dance of the Kais. The figure flew at high speeds towards the duo, only to be hit in the back with a large Kai blast, courtesy of Gohin. Gohin flew in, and the two figures started to exchange blows. Gohin tried dodging to the best of his ability, but the figure was too quick. Sion, Goku and Vegeta shouted as they both swung their arms out to the side. No the figure roared. He quickly struck the half Saiyan in the throat, causing him to hold his throat in agony, before he was met with a sledgehammer to the head, sending him reeling into the ground, his fiery red hair fading back to its original midnight. Ha ah, Goku and Vegeta shouted simultaneously. But just before their fingers touched, the figure materialized in front of Goku, his arm covered with Kai to form a razor-sharp blade. The figure thrust the blade forward as it ripped through the Saiyan, but the wrong one. The last thing Goku saw before he fused with Vegeta was his son appearing in front of him. Taking the blade right through his heart. Ah, shit. Izuku gazed in exhaustion as he noticed the 10 million points next to his name. Izuku sheepishly rubbed the back of his head, um Midnight Sensei, could you explain the event again? Aikinda wasn't listening. Midnight started at the teen in slight aggravation, but sighed as she went over the rules again. An. I honestly wrote a whole paragraph explaining this, but the entire chapter got deleted. I'm not doing it again. XD. Izuku listened and essentially understood the rules. He would have 15 minutes to construct a team of four. The point was to snatch as many headbands from the other teams to accumulate points. The teams with the most points at the end of the battle moved on to the finals. But only 16 people could make it, meaning basically, four teams. With my 10 million points, I don't have to play the offensive. I should be able just to sit back and let them come to me. I'll need to plan accordingly since I know that people want the straightforward way out. Izuku planned in his head. Or at least he thought he did. Aizu-kun, you're mumbling again, Momo informed with a sweat drop. Eh, the 15 minutes to find your team starts now midnight shouted. Immediately students started frantically searching to find their perfect team. Izuku turned towards Momo with a grin, only for it to falter slightly when he saw Momo looking a little sheepish. Momo, everything alright? Izuku asked worryingly. Momo felt lousy now for what she was about to tell him. He was looking at her with such care that it melted her heart. If it were any other situation, she would have cooed and smushed Izuku. She sighed before deciding just to come out with it. Aikinda already promised a dorky I would help him with one of the events. Since this is the only team event, I have to keep my word. Momo explained. Izuku eyes blazed red with brief anger, but disappeared only to reveal his emerald eyes now filled with slight hurt. Momo felt her heart clench with pain. She despised that expression on her Izuku. Why would you team with somebody like him? He treats every single one of us with disrespect. Izuku asked, getting slightly annoyed. His Saiyan instincts were screaming at him to control his mate, but his human side kept his thinking rational. Momo frowned, then is it not our job as the class presidents to figure out what his problem is and help him fit in? That's the problem he never wants to fit in Izuku pointed out angrily. The two stared at each other for a while with slight anger. I'm staying on his team Izuku. That's final. Momo concluded, her onyx eyes daring Izuku to argue further. Izuku stared into her eyes for a couple more seconds. Emerald crashing against Onyx before grunting and turning off to find teammates. If Momo wanted to help that asshole, so be it. He walked off so fast, he didn't notice the worried frown on Momo's face as he marched away. She didn't like it when Izuku walked away from her. It made her heart feel heavy. Izuku couldn't think of anything. He was angry, frustrated, and quite frankly slightly hurt. Don't get it twisted. He never expected or wanted Momo to stay at his sides at all times. That would be ridiculous and honestly in his future line of work, inconvenient. Maybe it was the fact that he felt betrayed by somebody he loved. He didn't know, but he decided to just concentrate on the task at hand. 
winning this damn sports festival. His intense determination was interrupted when he felt a firm hand on his shoulder. He turned to see Kirishima and Ajiro grinning at him. Yo, Izu bro trying to team up. Kirishima beamed. I feel like with our teamwork and chemistry, these other guys don't stand a chance against us, Ajiro winked. Izuku laughed and fist bumped his friends. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a purple-haired boy scowl as he glared at Ajiro, before turning and walking away. Weird. Izuku pondered. His thoughts were disrupted as he felt a soft tug on his shirt. Looking down, he saw Chako smiling at him. Got room for one more Deku. Izuku smirked and pulled the girl in for a hug, spinning with her and causing her to giggle. Of course, Achako alright, now that we've got a team, let's get to planning Izuku cheered with a smile. Momo stood with her team, consisting of Todoroki, Iida, and Kaminari. The team was overpowered in their own right with Todoroki's ability to freeze anything, Iida's immense speed, Kaminari's electricity, and her ability to create anything she knew how to. But without Izuku, the team just didn't feel complete. She looked over to see Izuku talking to Kirishima and Ajiro and smiled. He looked so handsome when he was determined, even now when his usual emerald eyes were a deep blood red. Her smile faded when she saw Chako run over to the group. She glared when she saw Izuku pick her up and hug her close. An intense and ugly feeling built up in her chest at the sight of them. Is this what jealous Lee is? Momo pondered as the envy built up in her chest. Regardless, she held her glare. Despite him probably being angry at her, she wanted to be enveloped in his arms. She wanted to inhale his forest scent as she kissed his firm, yet soft lips. She wanted to feel his growing manhood under her as she slowly undressed and whoa, geez, I'm repressed. She deadpanned. She looked over longingly at Izuku and made eye contact with him, only for him to frown and look away. That hurt. She decided she'd fix the problem after this cavalry battle when she could get him alone. She turned back to her team as midnight announced that the event would start in one minute. Todoroki-san, what's the plan? Momo questioned. The plan is simple. We go after Midoriya's 10 million. If we can get his headband, we can use my ice and Kaminari's electricity to play defense for the rest of the time. Todoroki explained. Todoroki-san, don't you think you're underestimating Midoriya-kun? His speed, power, and abilities are all powerful. It would be unwise to go in without some form of strategy against him, Iida explained. I don't care about Midoriya. I'm winning this thing, and that's all that matters. Todoroki concluded as he turned around. Momo sighed but began to get information for the cavalry battle ahead. Let the battle commence midnight proclaimed, causing the crowd to go wild. The plan was simple. Since Izuku would be on top, he wouldn't be able to make everyone fly without breaking formation, which would result in disqualification. So, that role went to Ichako. Kirishima and Ajiro would use their quirks for protection, Kirishima would harden to take the brunt of most attacks. Ajiro would use his tail to swipe anyone from coming too close to the team. And Izuku. I'm the bucking powerhouse if it starts going to shit. Izuku analyzed determined. As soon as midnight announced the start of the event, multiple teams rushed towards Izuku's team. Achako quickly touched everyone, making them float above the charge. Eku Katsuki screamed as he launched himself from his team to rush at Izuku. Izuku, with his eyes radiating a bright red, grinned wolfishly at Katsuki. Katsuki threw forward an explosion with both hands, only for Izuku to prevent it by putting his hands in Katsuki's. All that came out was a massive wind of smoke. The two glared at each other, yet both had almost evil grins on their faces as they pushed against each other for power. Of course, Izuku won out and Katsuki was forced to backflip back to his group, which caught him. Izu bro Todoroki, approaching on the left Kirishima informed. Izuku shifted swiftly and already felt the coldness from the iceberg Todoroki and his team were using to get to him. Kirishima hardened and start cracking that iceberg Achako keep holding on Izuku commanded. Kirishima did as instructed, but couldn't finish in time before Todoroki and his team was upon them. Todoroki looked at him with a smug grin before he lunged for the headband. Though the smug grin was wiped off his face when Izuku widened his eyes, causing a burst of air to send Todoroki flying. Our house Motherbaker Izuku shouted. Todoroki's team instantly sped off to catch him. The battle continued like this for the next 30 minutes. Teams would try to take Izuku's headband, only for them to either get swatted away, their attacks to be tanked by Kirishima, or for Izuku to use a burst of Kai to blow enemy teams away. Time Midnight shouted, stopping everyone in their tracks. That's time, in the first place we have Team Midoriya Midnight announced. Izuku, Kirishima, and Ajiro all cheered while Ichako vomited off to the side with her thumb held up. Second place, Team Todoroki Iida, Momo, and Kaminari cheered, but Todoroki was seething on the inside. That whole time, he couldn't even touch Izuku. It was like he had an automatic defense whenever someone got close. He looked over at said team to see him cheering. It wouldn't matter. He had something to prove and he wouldn't let that green-haired bastard stop him. All for one panted in absolute agony. 
the ritual that this man was performing on him was by far the worst thing he had experienced. Each muscle in his body felt as if they were being ripped apart, his body was on fire, and his head was pulsating. Good. The process of drawing out your Kai is going excellently. After it's completely drawn out, we'll begin your training. The shadowed figure announced. The figure gathered its Kai and made it circulate to its fingertips before ramming all five fingers into all for one's stomach. All for one gasped as he felt hot lava stream through his nerves and muscles. Due to the immense pain, he slumped unconscious shortly after. Excellent, this will prove to be a very beneficial pawn. Hidari, Tadashi the man summoned. Immediately there were two flashes, and the two appeared already kneeling. You called master? Tadashi asked with his head bowed. The figure let out a deep hum sound as he turned towards his students. Raise your heads. I need you to complete a mission for me. The Dari lifted her head, her eyebrow arched in question which prompted the figure to let out a deep chuckle. As you probably know, the UA Sports Festival is going on at the moment. I want the two of you to observe Izuku Midoriya simply. Observe his strengths, weaknesses, what gets him angry, what makes him sad, everything. I want a full report when the festival is over, understood. The voice commanded. Hi Tadashi and Hidari yelled as they crossed their arm over to place a closed fist on their chest. The two disappeared, leaving the figure with a passed out all for one. The last Saiyan in the universe, how exciting Goku and Vegeta provided me with the challenge I craved, but it's been millions of years since they were seen. If I play my cards right, Izuku Midoriya will provide me with the challenge I need. The final event was a one-on-one -on -one fighting tournament. During the announcement, two students from Team Shinso decided to quit due to them not remembering any of the previous events. This caused Izuku to frown. Something was suspicious about that Shinso guy. Izuku would have to watch out for him in the tournament. Because two members quit, Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu and Ibarra Shiazaki who were tuner-ups filled the spots. With everything decided, the matches were as following. 1. Mina Ishido vs. Kirishima Ijiro. 2. Shoto Todoroki vs. Mei Hatsum. 3. Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu vs. Achako Yuraka. 4. Hitashi Shinso vs. Katsuki Bakugo. 5. Denki Kaminari vs. Momo Yaoi Rozu. 6. Fumikage Tokoyami vs. Izuku Midoriya. 7. Ibarra Shiazaki vs. Ajiro Mashirao. 8. Tenya Iida vs. Hanta Siro. Um, I hate to say it, but I'll be seeing Todoroki and Katsuki in the finals. With Momo's pairing, I'll most likely see her as well. Seems I'm fighting Tokoyami, his quirk is ascension being of some kind. But I know how to combat that. There will be a 30 minute break before the matches, now's the time to rest, Midnight yelled. Izuku stretched as he began to walk towards the food court. But the sound of arguing drew his attention. Name? Izuku Midoriya. Race? Half Saiyan. Our level. Quirk. Extreme Kai Manipulation. Name. Momo Yaoi Rozu. Race. Human. Our level. 4000. Quirk. Creation. Name. Kirishima Jiro. Race. Human. Our level. 4200. Quirk. Hardening. Name. Kitsuki Bakugo. Race. Human. Our level. 5100. Quirk. Explosion. Name. Todoroki Shodo. Race. Human. Our level. 4900. Ice only. Quirk. Half cold, half hot. Name. Ajiro Mashirao. Race. Human. Our level. 4000. Quirk. Tail. Name. Achako Yuraka. Race. Human. Our level. 3900. Quirk. Zero gravity. Name. Tenya Iida. Race. Human. Our level. 4400. Quirk. Engine. Chapter 17. UA Sports Festival. Part 3. The golden aura from the fusion finally died down, revealing a very pissed off Gajeta. His hair flowed in the wind as his eyes narrowed in pure wrath. At his feet laid an unmoving Gohan, the blood was pooling from under his body, and his skin was pale. Gogeta closed his eyes as deep sadness overcame him, but he knew he had the battle to finish. He delicately picked up the corpse of Gohan, taking the time to observe his now pale face. Dried blood caked his skin, and his eyes had rolled to the back of his head. The combined Saiyan swore this tyrant would pay. Finally, clearing the battlefield of that trash. The battlefield is no place for common scum who don't take the thrill of battle seriously. The figure said as he floated in the air. His tail flicked back and forth like an excited dog, and he had a sickening grin on his face. Gogeta felt his Kai spike, but quickly breathed to calm it back down. He needed all the time in this fusion he could get. Placing Gohan down gently, the fusion warrior closed the fallen halfling's eyes. The half Saiyan's orange guy was ripped and destroyed, all but the blue undershirt remaining. Bruises peppered his pale skin, and blood was trailing from multiple areas on his body. He looked like death warmed over. Thank you, my son. Your sacrifice will not be in vain, I promise. Gogeta whispered. Gogeta rose slowly, his back facing the figure. He let out a deep breath, and within seconds a violent surge of silver ore erupted. 
The wind blew what remaining trees there were to the skies, and even the figure had to cover his face slightly. Vegeta's hair slowly turned from its midnight black color to a shiny silver. His eyes were doing the same. His muscles bulged, and his kai became undetectable as it entered the god's realm and changed to a pure white fiery color. The transformation was complete. Mastered Ultra Instinct, a form that even the god of destruction from each universe couldn't obtain. The tyrant smiled madly as the fusion warrior's power washed over him. He grew even more excited when his right arm began to shake slightly. Yes this feeling is what he wanted energy from a being that made even him afraid not backing down from the challenge, the tyrant began to spike his dark red kai, sending a malevolent vibe throughout the area. The two kais clashed against each other as the two warriors stared each other down. The final battle had begun. Izuku was making a beeline for the food vendor when the sounds of an argument stopped him. More specifically, who the voices belonged, Izuku couldn't recognize the other voice, but it sounded deeper, condescending as well. The other was the soft motherly voice of Momo that now sounded angry, yet scared. Deciding to see what was going on, Izuku peeked around the corner to see something that almost made him snap. Momo was standing in front of the number two pro hero Endeavor himself. He stood tall, confident, arrogant, and pride practically oozed from his being. His flaming beard shot everywhere for a few seconds as he yelled, Izuku assumed it reacted to his emotions. You're giving up the best opportunity of your miserable life think about it, a marriage between my son, and you could create the most powerful weapon, our families are practically made for each other, Endeavor shouted as he waved his one hand. Momo stepped back in slight disgust. What this man was offering was something that's been forbidden for years on top of that, there was no way she would ever marry Todoroki, she had someone else in mind for that. Are you seriously suggesting a quirk marriage between Todoroki and I no offense to him, but I have no intention of ever marrying him, no less marrying into your sick ideas of the family Todoroki is his own person, not some damn weapon for you to surpass all might I can see why you've been stuck at the number two spot for years now. You're no better than a villain Momo yelled, running out of breath at the end. Her shouting left some of her hair messy, and Izuku could see a small trail of sweat running down her head. Was it weird that he was kind of turned on from her being a badass? Endeavor gritted his teeth and looked as if he was about to burst. Steam practically blew from his ears, and his flames flew around sporadically. He raised his hand and sent it towards Momo. Oh, but no. With light speed, Izuku dashed in and caught Endeavor's hand with a firm grip. The catch caused a massive gust of wind to rush throughout the building. Endeavor widened his eyes as he now stared into the dark red ones of one Izuku Midoriya. And he was pissed. You must have lost your bucking mind, Hiro Izuku growled as he tightened his grip. The number two hero flinched and tried to pull his arm back, but to no avail. The cold fury emanating from the green-haired teen made the man shiver. Momo's eyes widened as Izuku seemingly appeared out of nowhere. His back was facing her, and she could see every muscle flex as he held Endeavor in his grip. Odd, that was hot. She flushed all the way down to her neck as very intimate thoughts started to come to her, but they quickly stopped as Izuku began to talk to the hero. This doesn't concern you, boy. I suggest you leave before I show you why I'm at the top. The man spat in contempt. He tried to rip his hand away, but his hand hadn't even moved to his astonishment. Release me now, boy. Izuku simply smirked, what's wrong? You're the number two pro hero in Japan, right? You should be able to overpower little Almi. Endeavor snarled and tried to rip his arm away again, but it just wouldn't budge. His muscles bulged, and the fire started roaring from his body. All the while, Izuku stood still, not even attempting to keep Endeavor still. Momo stared in amazement. It seemed impossible, but somehow Izuku had gotten even stronger, so, you like fire, huh? Okay, then. Izuku taunted. With that being said, a massive fiery aura shot from Izuku, his eyes turned a brighter red, his muscles became leaner, and his curly green hair slowly turned red. The power gap that was already huge became bigger as Izuku now floated above Endeavor, who was now forced onto one knee. Izuku still held his hand in his grasp, his flaming aura was causing a pressure the pro hero had never felt before. Let me make something clear to you, Endeavor. Momo isn't an item you can use to make your dysfunctional family stronger. If she decides to marry into your family, then that's her choice, at this, Momo frowned slightly. The next time you mess with her, I'll introduce your face into Earth's core, and the relationship will be intimate. Izuku finished with a snarl. He threw Endeavor's hand away, sending the large man tumbling into the ground. The flame hero got up with a grumble, but quickly backed off as the red eyes started to flash silver. HMPH. She'll come around, they always do. Endeavor scoffed as he walked down the hall. Izuku let out a sigh as his blazing aura died down. His hair returned to its soft green. He looked back at Momo, who was frozen in slight shock, and began to walk off before he felt a grip on his wrist. Izuku, we need to talk. Momo declared. Her eyes had a glint to them, and she looked as if she wouldn't take no for an answer. Izuku sighed, what is there to talk about? 
You made yourself pretty clear the last time we talked. That was different from this but, since we're starting with that, I'm betting you can see why Todoroki is the way he is Momo retaliated. Izuku scoffed, so because he has daddy issues, he's allowed to treat everyone else like they're beneath him. Sorry, but I don't pity assholes. Momo eyebrows furrowed in frustration. Izuku never was this cold. He was understanding, kind, and tried his best to make everyone feel happy. This Izuku was utterly different. It was then that she noticed his eyes. The usual green that made Momo swoon with a single look was now a deep red that looked angry, guarded, almost like they were always expecting a fight. That's it when Izuku's eyes were red, he was usually angry the last time she had seen his eyes like this was during his fight with Bakugo. Izuku, I don't know what's wrong with your quirk, but you're not thinking straight. This isn't like you Momo begged. Izuku flinched but ripped his hand away from Momo's grip. The action caused her eyes to water slightly, and Izuku felt his Saiyan instincts metaphorically slap him in the back of the head. He was technically making his mate sad. But the pain of seeing her defend Todoroki so vehemently was starting to get to him. He began to walk away again, but stopped as he felt slim arms wrap around his stomach. Please, Izuku, I can't take this anymore. I don't like it when you're angry with me. I want you to hold me again, I don't like this feeling in my chest when I see you with other girls, I don't like seeing you look at me another way besides with love in your eyes. Please, I want my Izuku back. Momo cried, her voice was so frail and small, something Izuku had never heard from her before. His eyes glowed for a few seconds before they flashed gold, then returned to their regular green. The effect was immediate, he felt able to think clearly, he felt calmer and more. He looked at Momo, who was hugging herself, her tears were still falling, causing the guilt in Izuku to flare. He reached out and pulled her into an embrace that she immediately reciprocated. She held him tightly, almost as if he would float away if she lessened her grip. He felt his shirt begin to soak with her tears, and he held her closer. I'm sorry princess, I didn't know you were holding on to these feelings for so long. Ever since our first date, I've felt everything you've felt and more. I guess that's why I didn't like you being around Todoroki. He's just cooler than me, you know. He's more attractive, richer, and overall I'm a pretty plain purr. Momo cut him off by smashing her lips into his. Izuku gasped in surprise, letting Momo slip her tongue in. The green-haired Saiyan felt himself slip into bliss as his tongue wrestled with hers, only for him to lose immediately. Momo jumped up, wrapping her legs around the halfling's waist, as he caught her, his grip on her thighs. Momo moaned softly as she continued hungrily kissing Izuku. To be honest, she had wanted this forever. The heroine in training adjusted herself, prompting her hex to rub against Izuku's manhood, making them both to let out a soft moan. Izuku pulled back, making the teen caressing his face whimper, a small strand of saliva dissipated between them. Their faces were flushed and covered in slight sweat. Momo's hair was strewn over her face, giving her a wild, seductive look. They panted as they leaned their foreheads against each other. That was Izuku began. He had never felt such intense emotions, and this made something clear to him. He was definitely in love with Momo Yaoi Rozu. Yeah does this mean? Momo inquired as she opened her eyes slightly to gauge Izuku's reaction. Izuku nodded his head as he gazed into her onyx orbs. I, I would like that. The following matches were pretty tasteless in Izuku's opinion. Izuku didn't disrespectfully mean that either. It was just compared to the type of feats he'd seen from his senseis, even All Might's fight seemed bland. Kirishima won his match easily. Mina's acid hardly affected Kirishima when he used his quirk, allowing him to close in and throw her out of the ring. Todoroki vs Mei was what Izuku called overkill. As soon as the match started, Todoroki sent a massive iceberg that froze Mei instantly. She didn't stand a chance. The next match was also a hard-fraught match between Achako and Tetsutetsu. Surprisingly in close combat, Achako was the one with the advantage, though Tetsutetsu could harden, if the anti-gravity girl could lay a finger on him, he would lose his gravity. The problem was that every time Ichako released him from her quirk, Tetsutetsu would use his hardening quirk to take the impact. This cycle repeated until eventually, Ichako couldn't use her quirk any longer, allowing Tetsutetsu to win by ring out. Though she put up a good fight, Izuku couldn't help but notice the crestfallen look on her face. She looked utterly defeated. I'll have to talk to her after my match. Izuku thought with a small frown. The next match was the most surprising for Izuku. For one, he severely underestimated Shinso's quirk and how effective it would be against the explosive blonde loudmouth. As soon as the match started, Shinso said something that seemed to piss Bakugo off, causing Bakugo to yell. As soon as he did, though, the teen got an empty look in his eye. Shinso said something else, and to everyone's shock, Bakugo began to walk towards the edge. Class 1A may have disliked the boy's behavior, but he was still one of them they began yelling words of encouragement, but to no avail, Bakugo just kept walking. That was until Izuku decided to say something. Wow, you're supposed to beat me for number one hero. Pathetic Izuku taunted loudly. 
Class 1 and Momo looked at him with shock, but stopped when they saw Bakugo stop walking, right near the edge of the ring. Izuku held up his hand, 5432. What the hell did you say you damn Deku? Bakugo yelled as he set off explosions that sent him rocketing towards Shinso at breakneck speeds. Poor Shinso couldn't even put his guard up before Bakugo's head impacted with his stomach, crashing him through the stadium wall. As Bakugo was announced the winner, the blonde-haired boy turned and made eye contact with Izuku. The two stared each other down before Katsuki nodded and walked out of the ring. He did Katsuki just give me respect. Izuku muttered in disbelief. Momo giggled next to him and gently squeezed his hand. That's probably his way of saying thank you Izuku-kun. His pride is too large to say it regularly I guess. Momo explained. Izuku nodded, but noticed Momo was staring at him with slight irritation now. It was then that Izuku noticed she was next to fight. She must want me to wish her good luck Izuku realized. Ah, good luck princess you got this Izuku cheered. Momo was still glaring at him. You um, aren't you going to go down for your match? I'm not leaving without a good luck kiss, Momo growled as she took a step forward. Izuku took a step back but found himself pushed against the railing. I in front of all these people. You're on camera, you know. Izuku cried as he waved his hands. Alas, Momo wouldn't take no for an answer. She seized the front of his shirt and pulled him into a passionate kiss. Poor Izuku was defenseless as her tongue wandered his mouth. When Momo was finally finished, leaving a strand of saliva between them. She dropped a blushing, whimpering Izuku like a sack of potatoes with a broad smile. Class 1 was shocked, including Bakugo. Ah, now I feel like I can take on All Might himself Momo cheered. And from the crowds cheering and wooing, they agreed with her. With that, she made her way toddy ring where a shock Denki awaited her. No pun intended. As Momo expected, as soon as the match started, Denki sent as much electricity as he could. Thinking quickly, Momo created a rubber shield that prevented everything Denki threw at her. As soon as the electricity stopped coming, Momo knew the match was over. Denki had overused his quirk, leaving him useless. Momo quickly apologized, then knocked Denki out of the ring. Momo beamed as the crowd cheered for her, but she knew all the training she did with Izuku was worth it when she made eye contact with her boyfriend. Izuku grinned and gave a thumbs up, getting a gorgeous smile in return. Alright it's my turn now Izuku thought with excitement. Ah, looks like little Izuku is up now. Hidari whispered while licking her lips. Hidashi rolled his eyes and focused on the target. Something wasn't right about him. The boy obviously had grown stronger since their last encounter, but that wasn't it. He seemed calmer. More mature. It was something that Tadashi listed down to tell his master. Tadashi flexed his arm as a feeling he hadn't had since his fight with Izuku rushed through his body. Excitement. The boy wasn't stronger than him when he used his god powers, sure. But when he wasn't, they were dead even in power. Each blow he took, each blow he gave out sent tremors of excitement throughout the usually stoic man. Is this why master loves fighting so much? Tadashi questioned himself. To him, fighting was never something he did for enjoyment or competitively, it was an obligation. It was a way to repay his master for all he's done for him. The people he's fought and killed never stood a chance. There was no back and forth, no questions of if he might have died. Just complete annihilation. But with a green-haired half-Saiyan, things were different. He felt the pain he's only felt from spars with Hidari or his master. Every time he was able to get a hit on the teen, his adrenaline spiked. When Izuku ascended to Super Saiyan 2, he questioned if this was a battle he would lose. Him the strongest under his master the teen even forced him to tap into his god Kai. His master had never been wrong before and he believed in him now more than ever. Izuku Midoriya had unlimited potential. And now the fight you've been waiting for. Approaching from the right side we have Humikage Tokoyami he's made his way here using his powerful quirk. Dark Shadow the crowd cheered loudly as Tokoyami stepped onto the ring, Dark Shadow coming out ready for battle. Tokoyami knew that this would probably be the most challenging battle he would face throughout his hero career. Izuku was a phenomenon. He was no fool, Izuku was a thousand times more powerful than All Might. Even in his prime. To beat Izuku, he would need to be strong and quick, but have a complete and sound strategy. Approaching from the left we have Izuku Midoriya this green bean has done nothing, but destroy the competition can he beat the dark shadow. Present Mick announced loudly. Izuku stepped out onto the ring, smiling broadly as the crowd went berserk for him. He faced Tokoyami and bowed before getting into the turtle hermit fighting stance. Though Koyami recoiled in surprise, but quickly bowed before getting ready for a fight. Midnight stepped next Adi Ring, raising her hand in the air as a signal, are both contestants ready? She received a nod from Izuku, then one from Tokoyami. With that, her hand flew down, signaling the match. Immediately Dark Shadow flew at Izuku at top speed, Izuku dashed out of the way, leaving a crater where Dark Shadow struck. I may have avoided, but as long as I'm in this ring I'm within Tokoyami-kun's range. Izuku thought as he dodged a swipe from Dark Shadow. 
Tokoyami's strategy was a simple yet effective one, don't let Izuku get close. Tokoyami knew if he even received a flick from Izuku, it would be over. The plan was to use Dark Shadow to keep him close to the edge of the ring. Eventually, Izuku would slip up and fall out. At least he hoped he would. Izuku swiftly dodged everything Dark Shadow threw at him while it complained about him not sitting still. Izuku already knew how he was going to end this though. Dark Shadow's weakness was light, and Izuku could generate copious amounts of that just by powering up. Sliding under another swipe, Izuku used his hand to push himself back to gain distance. Dark Shadow swiftly changed course and charged back in. Just what Izuku wanted. Solar Flare Izuku shouted. Blinding light suddenly filled the stadium for a few seconds, but that was all Izuku needed. Dark Shadow screeched before it shrunk down, and Tokoyami was blinded by the technique. Izuku teleported behind Tokoyami and delivered a swift chop to the back of the teen's neck, catching him before he could hit the ground. As the light faded, Midnight slowly opened her stinging eyes to see Izuku holding an unconscious Tokoyami. W winner of this match, Izuku Midoriya, to be continued. Our levels, name. Izuku Midoriya, race. Half Saiyan, our levels. Unknown, quirk. Extreme Kai Manipulation, name. Momo Yaoi Rozu, race. Human, our level. 4000, quirk. Creation, name. Kitsuki Bakugo, race. Human, our level. 5100, quirk. Explosion, name. Kirishima Jiro, race. Human, our level. 4200, quirk. Hardening, name. Todoroki Shoto, race. Human, our level. 4900, ice only, quirk. Half cold, half hot, name. Echako Yuraka, race. Human, our level. 3900, quirk. Zero gravity, name. Tetsutetsu Tetsutetsu, race. Human, our level. 4150, quirk. Steel, name. Mina Shido, race. Human, our level. 4000, quirk. Acid, name. Meihatsum, race. Human, our level. 3000, quirk. Zoom, name. Hitashi Shinso, race. Human, our levels, quirk unactivated. 2800, quirk activated. 5500, 10000, depends on target's will, quirk. Brainwashing, name. Denki Kaminari, race. Human, our level. 4500, quirk. Electrification, name. Fumikage Tokoyami, race. Human, our level. 5000, quirk. Dark Shadow, Chapter 18. UA Sports Festival, Part 4. The Jetta released a breath of anxiousness before charging forward to finish things. The figure smiled sickeningly before it dashed off to clash with Gajetta, their first punch caused the earth itself to shake. Gajetta released the tension causing the tyrant to fall forward into a knee from the fusion warrior. The tyrant coughed up blood but quickly tried retaliating with a back fist that missed the Saiyan completely. What's wrong? Can't hit me. Gajetta yelled as he grabbed the creature's face and rushed downward. The figure struggled but to no avail as Gajetta drove its head into the ground. You're going to pay you're going to suffer, Gajetta shouted as he stomped on the figure's head, driving its head further into the ground. Gajetta started at the unmoving figure beneath his boot. He held out his hand as a basketball-sized Kai Blast started to appear. Pathetic. With those words, he released a Kai Blast that decimated the area. Gajetta waited for the smoke to clear as he silently waited for his opponent to attack. He wasn't stupid. He knew this monster was even more potent than Wiss, a blast like that wouldn't even scratch him. Unfortunately, just like he expected, a blade of Kai barely missed him by a hair as his body moved itself to the side. Gajetta dashed out of the smoke, the figure following closely behind. At the last second, Gajetta spun forward and shoved both his feet back, landing it in the figure's chest. It seemed to take the hit well and lashed out with a sidekick that Gajetta blocked before they started to exchange blows. You're too good this is what I wanted someone that could give me the fight I wanted, the figure cackled madly as he slammed both his hands towards Gajetta's head. The Saiyan warrior blocked, sending him towards the ground, he caught himself in a crouch but stepped to the side as the tyrant crashed into the ground. You talk too much, Gajetta mumbled. The figure shrugged before looking around at the carnage they had wreaked on what used to be Earth. Such a magnificent warrior and I don't even have your name. Gajetta. Remember it as the name that sent you to an early grave, the Saiyan bout as a fiery white aura exploded from his body. The figure chuckled, then escalated into full-blown belly laughter. Ah, you're too good to be true fine, I'll play this game. The figure's malevolent dark red aura exploded, clashing with Gajetta's. The two started each other down. Now that the warm-ups are over, let's get this started. The name's Azrael, the fallen angel. Remember it well, but that, the two charged in and clashed in the middle. Ajiro vs Ibarra was an entertaining match, Izuku could appreciate the pure martial arts that both showed. Though they used their quirk, it was only to enhance their attacks. In all honesty, it made Izuku even more excited to fight. 
Unfortunately, Izuku's high spirits were crushed when Iida had to rush out due to a family emergency. That didn't sound good at all. The rest of the matches went as expected though, Katsuki overpowered Tetsutetsu, and unfortunately, Kirishima was frozen before the match even started. That left a match that had the audience buzzing with excitement. Shoto Todoroki, the son of the number two hero, and Bakugo Katsuki, the explosive porcupine who wants to be the best at anything. The two teens met in the middle of the ring, the tension thick as present Mick announced their names. As soon as present Mick announced the fight start, Bakugo shot off with an explosion that Shoto tried to counter by sending a large iceberg his way. However, Bakugo was too versatile and dodged out of the way. The explosive blonde landed with an explosion and lashed out with a kick that Shoto blocked with both hands. Before he could grab Bakugo, the teen used his quirk to gain distance. Come on, you half and half bastard fight me with everything you got Bakugo taunted. Todoroki released a cold breath as he narrowed his eyes before releasing another stream of ice towards Bakugo, who grunted angrily as he used his explosion to swap the glaze aside. Damn this bastard, he's holding back that damn fire of his Bakugo launched himself once again, waiting for Todoroki to launch another ice attack. As expected, Todoroki swept his arm to release a torrent of ice. Got you damn half and half bastard, Bakugo shouted as he used his explosion to maneuver out of the way. As he dodged, he used his quirk to boost his speed to get into Todoroki's defense. Bakugo delivered a powerful gut punch with a battle cry that caused the ice user to cough up blood. Todoroki rolled to the edge of the ring as blood fell from his mouth slowly. From the corner of his eye, he could see Bakugo stomping towards him. Groaning silently, he got up and spat some blood out to the side. He could feel it, his body was getting to the point where he was starting to shiver. The good thing about controlling ice and fire was when the ice became too much, he could use the fire to warm him up, and vice versa. Too bad Todoroki was stubborn to a fault. As soon as Bakugo was nearby enough, Todoroki swept out with a low kick that caught the teen, sending him to the ground. Bakugo stuck out both arms, ready to put out an explosion, but Todoroki predicted this and sent a small stream of ice at him, sending him rolling to the other side of the ring. The porcupine boy recovered quickly and dashed back in to engage in close combat. Damn, there's just no end to his rush. I need to keep him at a distance. Todoroki calculated as he got in his combat stance. Releasing a chilled breath, Todoroki summoned all his willpower and sent a massive block of ice that took up most of the arena. The half and half boy knew that that wouldn't hold the explosive quirk user, but took this time to catch his breath and let his quirk calm down. It wasn't long before Bakugo came flying out and swung out with a right that the ice user managed to weave under. He delivered an uppercut to Bakugo's liver and snapped out with a kick that Bakugo blocked at the last second. DCH, come on, you bastard I was hoping you could give me the challenge I came looking for after I take you down, then I'm aiming for that green dumbass Bakugo yelled out with a feral grin on his face. Izuku frowned, this green dumbass has super hearing he yelled back. That's why I yelled it this caused Izuku to pout as Momo rubbed his back for comfort. I hate to admit it, but beating him is my best chance at becoming the number one hero, so it's either you use your quirk to the fullest potential, or I blow your ass out of this ring. At that, Kitsuki's hand started to smoke, literally AP shot with that shout, he delivered a powerful blast that Todoroki barely managed to block with his quirk. As the smoke surrounded him, he realized he made a huge mistake. He lost sight of his enemy. The smoke surrounded him, obscuring one of his most important senses. An explosion from his right had him set off his quirk, only to hit nothing but air. His eyes widened as he felt a slight heat touch his neck, but it was already too late. He had fallen for it. An explosion sent him rocketing into a roll across the ground as his body ached and his vision swam with blurriness. Before he had time to recover, Bakugo was next to him, sending a kick to his side that sent him rolling once again to the side of the arena. Todoroki let out a shudder of pain, the coldness in his body showing from the breath he released. I overused my quirk too much. Damn. I can't even move my body, but I won't go out like this not yet. Todoroki stood up shakily and held his ribs in pain. Bakugo stood on the other side of the arena with what seemed to be a disappointed scowl on his face. So this is the great Shoto Todoroki. The student who was brought in through recommendation for his unbelievable versatility and strength with his quirk. This isn't even a match Bakugo said, though his voice was unusually monotone. There was none of his usual anger and violence, just disappointment. I have to agree, Izuku shouted from the stands. The green-haired teen had his arms folded against his chest, and his enormous smile was also gone, in place was a familiar scowl that showed disgust. There are people in this world who dream, beg, and cry to have a quirk like yours. To have a quirk, period. As he said those last words, his eyes briefly flickered to Bakugo. Something the blonde boy noticed and flinched slightly. Yet you stand here, not even using your quirk to its fullest capabilities he yelled out as his eyes flickered to a burning gold. All because of your disgusting excuse of a man you call your father. Well, here's my advice, get over it. 
Todoroki's eyes widened at the green-haired teen statement and he snarled, what the hell do you know about my life? About how I was treated. About why I am the way I am. His rant was cut off. Not by a glare. Not by a shout. Not with a plea or a reason. It was met with a small smile. A smile that showed that Izuku knew what it was like. He knew what it was like to be belittled by those that were supposed to be there for you. To be abused or bullied for something you had no control over. To lose love for a dream that you held so close to your heart. Todoroki, I know it's hard to push through all the opposition you feel. But that, to me, is the biggest part of being a hero. To push through everything that stands in your way with a large smile and say, everything's okay do you want to know something? It's not your mother's quirk. Not your siblings, not your friends, and most importantly, it's not that bastard's endeavor's quirk Izuku yelled as he gripped the stands with a large smile. Todoroki's eyes widened as they held unshed tears, little flakes and embers of fire started to float around him. It's your quirk Todoroki, isn't it? Izuku finished with a mighty scream that brought Todoroki back to a time where everything was alright in his world. Mom mom look look a young Todoroki shouted in amazement as he jumped up and down, pointing at the TV that showed All Might rescuing over 30 people at once. A large smile on the man's face as he yelled his famous catchphrase, I am here. His mother giggled quietly, yes, honey, I see it. When I get older, I wanna be just like All Might I want to be a hero can I. Todoroki looked back at his mother with a large grin and hopeful eyes. His mother smiled and gently caressed his face between her hands. Oh, sweetheart, you can be whatever you put your mind to. Especially a hero. Just like that, a fire erupted from Todoroki's left side that had the crowd covering their faces from the intense heat. Bakugo let a shit-eating grin come to his face as his opponent finally showed his real power. Izuku smiled from the stands as well, proud of his classmate and now, hopefully in the future, friend. He felt his right hand get a small squeeze and looked over to see Momo smiling at him proudly. Thank you, Izukun, I mean it. She thanked as she closed her eyes, holding a beautiful blush and perfect smile. Izuku blushed and looked away, why yeah, it's whatever. Momo just giggled at her boyfriend. So you're finally ready to do this? Bakugo shouted as his hand started to emit small explosions. Todoroki smiled and readied himself by crouching slightly. The air was filled with silence as both students stared each other down, before suddenly both took off, using their quirks to boost their speeds tremendously. Todoroki shot forward, an intense heat following him as he began to raise his hand. Bakugo shot off with a loud explosion and started using miniature ones to propel him in a spinning formation. Cementus, this is becoming dangerous we have to stop this midnight yelled with panic. Cementus nodded and started to use his quirk before the two attacks met. The two met in the middle, and before the attacks met, Todoroki muttered something that he knew Midoriya would pick up with his quirk. Midoriya thank you. Oh it's her impact Bakugo yelled as he fired his attack at Todoroki, causing a massive explosion to rock the entire stadium. Samantis put a barrier that slightly reduced the damage, while Izuku put up a Kai shield to protect everyone in the crowd. Those damn powerhouses Izuku muttered though the smile on his face had nothing but excitement. The crowd waited in anticipation as the smoke cleared. When it did, the crowd gasped in amazement as Bakugo stood in the middle of the arena, his top wholly gone and the rest of his clothes in tatters. Todoroki, on the other hand, was not only out of the ring, but buried in the wall as he fell to the ground. The Todoroki is out of the ring Katsuki Bakugo is the winner. The crowd went crazy. Izuku stood across from Momo, smiling eagerly. The crowd buzzed with excitement from the last match and hoped that this one would be just as entertaining. So, how do you want to do this, princess? Izuku asked as he began to stretch his legs carefully. A habit he had picked up from one of his senseis. Momo frowned slightly as she thought Izuku's question through. During the time before the sports festival, she had asked Izuku to train with her. Her training consisted of hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons training, and meditation, which Momo found strange at first. We can start with weapons if you don't mind. Momo asked as she used her quirk to make two bow staffs. Usually, using weapons was against the rules, but when your quirk gave you the ability, it was a loophole. Momo threw out one of the bow staffs to Izuku, who caught it and twirled it around his body with a smile. He crouched slightly after twirling it while holding the staff with his right hand, keeping it tight against his arm and slightly behind his back, using the Shaolin stance. Momo followed suit and soon the couple were staring each other down. With no time to waste, Izuku dashed in at moderate but still fast speeds, with an overhead swing that Momo managed to block at the last second. Momo managed to push off her opponent's staff and swung out to miss as Izuku moved back. Not letting Izuku get time to think, Momo dashed in and sent a sweep at his feet, which Izuku dodged by raising that one leg. Using that to her advantage, Momo used her staff to send a quick jab that Izuku deflected and retaliated. Before Momo had time to realize her mistake, she found the breath taken from her as the staff found its way to her stomach. She collapsed to one knee as she used her staff for support. 
She knew challenging Izuku to any close combat was a death wish, but she wanted Izuku to see her progress truly. Alright, you've gotten way better than before, Momo you actually managed to catch me off guard a few times. Izuku smiled, Momo painfully grinned as she stood back up to her full height. She didn't even know if the crowd was cheering or not due to the adrenaline running through her body. Thank you, Izuku-sensei. She said with a tease to her voice. But why don't we start getting serious? Momo insisted as she got into her modified fighting style of the turtle hermit. During their time of training, Izuku realized that the turtle hermit style didn't suit Momo. While yes, the style was quite versatile, the style had evolved over the years as Goku used it. Through all the fights that Goku had, he fixed any openings, flaws, and anything else that would lead to defeat. Who knew his other sensei was a perfectionist? To sum it all up, Izuku learned the version that Goku perfected. Meaning the style was more adapted to fit the Saiyan. Size, muscles, the durability of the race, etc. Things that Momo would most likely never have. A female martial artist usually relied on flexibility and speed due to their smaller stature. So that's what Izuku decided to change. Through trial and error, he was able to teach the basics of the fighting style to Momo, but a modified version that fit her best. Sure, but don't get mad if this fight ends a little earlier. Izuku taunted. Though it may have sounded mean, Momo took no offense to it. She knew that when Izuku got into a fight, he tended to act cockier, more confident. She assumed it had something to do with his quirk or maybe just his personality. Momo started to inch forward, trying to figure out how best to attack Izuku. While her style was built around speed, Izuku was way faster than she was. She figured her best option was to just go for it. No matter what she did, Izuku would most likely counter. She lunged in with a swing that Izuku swatted aside and swiftly dodged to the side as another punch came. Not being deterred, Momo used the momentum to spin into a kick that Izuku blocked like it was nothing. Come on, princess. You'll have to try a little harder than that Izuku yelled as he used his leg to sweep. Hatching herself, Momo regained her footing only to be put back on the defensive as Izuku rushed in and started to throw quick punches. Despite knowing Izuku was holding back tremendously, she could still feel her arms buckle as she blocked each attack from the green-haired teen. If he keeps me on the defensive, he'll keep gaining momentum I have to go on the attack somehow Momo waited until she could slip one of Izuku's crosses and threw a punch to his side that hit but didn't affect the teen at all. Izuku smirked as he grabbed the girl's arm and twisted it to open her guard, countering by sending a slightly enhanced palm to her sternum. The blow sent Momo careening to the edge of the ring, gasping for air for a few seconds before she shakily stood up. Izuku smiled apologetically before using his kai to send a powerful wind at Momo that sent her flying out of the arena. Before she could hit the ground, Izuku was already there to catch her, of course. He was floating, obviously. He wasn't stupid. Suo, do I drop you now? Or are you just gonna volunteer? Izuku teased as Momo tightened her grip. Momo laughed, I could put up more of a fight, but a wise fighter knows when they're beaten. You win this time, Mr. Midoriya dot with that, Momo pecked him on the cheek and hopped down to the ground. And Momo has decided to give up making Izuku the winner present mechanics to the crowd. At that point, both students forgot that there even was a crowd. Izuku ignored his cheers as he looked up to his class stands to make eye contact with his red-eyed childhood friend. The final match would be approaching soon. Chapter 19. UA Sports Festival, Part 5. The Fated Battle Between Rivals. Vegeta chuckled as he blocked another jab and weaved under another. His opponent was slowing down slapping aside a cross blow to his head, Gogeta pushed in and delivered a devastating gut punch. Blood and spit flew from Azrael's mouth as he held his stomach in agony. The fallen angel was confident that the hit had broken some ribs. Amazing, your hits only grow mightier as the fight Azrael started, but was cut off as Gogeta teleported above him and delivered a spinning front kick that sent him spiraling to the jaggy remains of what was once called Earth. Before he could even get close to the ground, Gogeta appeared to throw another jaw-shattering punch that sent the villain flying in another direction. Final Big Bang Kamehameha the 10th 100 Gogeta roared, beginning to gather the necessary Kai to finish this. It had gone on for long enough. Ha Gogeta commenced as he dashed towards the still-rocketing form of Azrael. Azrael realizing what was happening, widened his eyes in actual panic as he tried to rotate to stop the momentum, only to run into a knee that made him throw up even more blood. Azrael looked up only to stare into a cold silver contempt. I I made a mistake I should have never crossed these Saiyans Azrael swung out frantically, but Gogeta flipped backward, crashing his chin with the very tip of his foot. A classic Gogeta move. Mihami Gogeta's blast was now glowing a brilliant silver with electricity shooting off the ball of destruction. He teleported right above where Azrael was going to arrive and began to fly downwards, building up an impossible speed, his silver heat aura trailing behind him like fire. The Saiyan flipped just at the right time to plant both feet into the angel's chest, sending both of them rushing back towards Earth. 
For my family, for the people of Earth, for the Saiyan race, a single tear fell out the right side of Gogeta's face as he concluded his final message to Azrael. For Son Gohan, the last Earthling to lay down his life year finished as soon as Gogeta finished, Azrael's back hit the ground shaking the Earth and creating a large crater. Gogeta thrust his arms forward with a final yell to complete his ultimate attack, directing it right at the head of the villain. Aiaiaia, blazing red eyes clashed with glowing emerald green. The tension in the air could be cut with a knife as the two teens stared each other down. Izuku and Kitsuki walked around the other, waiting, anticipating when the other would strike. Kitsuki Bakugo was no fool, he knew from previous experience that getting hit by Izuku wasn't a brilliant idea. Unless he wanted to end up in a hospital bed for another week, though he did have a few tricks up his sleeve, he knew that he needed to play this smart or he would be guaranteed a loss. Alright, he's some kung fu master, meaning he's most likely going to wait for me to attack so he can counter and punish. So I need to change up what the nerd knows of my fighting style his facial expression took one of astonishment as Izuku was suddenly in from him getting ready to launch a punch. Only by pure instinct and years of training, Kitsuki could use his quirk to rocket himself back. His retreat was for nothing as Izuku merely changed direction and rushed at him again. What the hell am I thinking? This is how it was always meant to be between us no thinking, no strategies, just straight combat Kitsuki smiled one of his evil smiles as he used his quirk to charge right as Izuku. Izuku swung out with a sharp punch that Kitsuki was able to blast his way out of scarcely. He used his explosions to give him momentum and spun to swing out with a kick that Izuku grabbed quickly, slamming the teen into the concrete. Kitsuki felt his back cry out in anguish but ignored it and aimed his hand straight at Izuku's face, pelting it with explosions. Learning from last time, Kitsuki followed it up with a blow to the half Saiyan's face, moving his head slightly. Kitsuki tried to pull his hand back only to realize that Izuku had it held in place, a tiny smile on his face. You're the first actually to hit me in this festival. Izuku dragged the boy closer, using his grip to do so. They were nose to nose, and because of that, Kitsuki was able to see the green-haired teen's eyes light up slightly. But you're a far way from beating me if that's all you've got. Izuku forced Kitsuki's hand to the side, throwing the teen off balance. Izuku took this opening to deliver a palm to the stomach that spontaneously took the air out of Kitsuki and sent him flying towards the edge of the ring. Izuku immediately appeared behind him and grabbed him by the back of the head, aiming to slam his opponent's head into the ground. It was only with quick thinking that Kitsuki could fire a burst of explosions that slowed his descent into concrete heaven. Kitsuki threw back an elbow that Izuku evaded by stepping back, but Kitsuki wasn't finished. He used his quirk to boost each hit he threw after that. The cross, jab, low kick, body cross, uppercut. Each bit was fueled by explosive pressure that was either dodged or blocked by Izuku. Kitsuki backed off and shook his head in frustration. It seemed that the other team countered everything he tried his hand sizzled with micro-explosions as countless strategies ran through his mind, the roar of the crowd was deafened by the pure adrenaline running through his veins. During all this, Izuku stood across from him, a neutral expression on his face. Not even a bead of sweat on him. The spiky-haired teen blasted himself in the sky with a roar before using his quirk to add to his spinning descent. Then, at the last second, he lashed out with a kick that Izuku dodged by simply stepping to the side. The ring cracked from the sheer power of the attack as smoke and cinder rose from the area. I won't lie, Bakugu, I can feel the ferocity in every one of your strikes. If this had been anyone else Izuku's face twisted into a cocky smirk that somehow fit his face perfectly. You might have been able to ruffle their clothes at least. Bakugo exploded in anger and charged back in once again, throwing different punches, kicks, elbows, anything he could think of. Izuku laughed as he dodged each and every one before slipping the jab and rotating his body to land and roundhouse kick to the jaw that the blonde prodigy never saw coming. The boy rolled across the arena before coming to a stop on the ground, letting out a few coughs. Izuku bounced on his toes as he threw out some experimental sound-breaking jabs. Wanna know something interesting, Bakugo? The injured teen looked up with annoyance, embarrassment, and slight trepidation for what the green-haired teen had to say. What, you useless bastard? The teen spat. Izuku snickered as he started to stretch out his body, not that this fight was even classified as a warm-up for him. Izuku stood up straight before cracking his neck with a close-eyed grin, this whole time, I've been wearing weights that reduce my speed by almost 95%. Bitsuki Bakugu had felt this feeling a few times. Once when All Might had first encountered that weird villain five years ago, another when his mom found out he was bullying Deku, not that it stopped him, and most recently when he believed he would die against that slime villain. But. At hearing those words come out of his opponent's mouth, the one he hadn't been able to hit since the beginning of his fight well. It sent absolute fear throughout his body. Momo shook her head in exasperation. Of course even in a competition to push past your limits and prove yourself, my boyfriend decides to wear training weights. 
boyfriend the word unsurprisingly still sent butterflies to her stomach and a rosy blush to her cheeks every time she thought about the newly established title. Her fluffy thoughts of marrying Izuku and going to France for a honeymoon were interrupted by the amazement of her classmates. 95%%. There's no way he has to be lying to throw Bakugusen off his game Kaminari reasoned. The class seemed to agree in a way until Izuku started to remove his wristbands and UA top. Dropping them to the ground. Only for the ring to break and split in half. Class Wana and the rest of the spectators gawked in astonishment as the rumbling from the weights came to a stop. Momo, already used to these fantastic feats from her boyfriend, Q the Butterflies, merely took the time to take in the show that was Izuku's upper body. But Kami come to Mama. Before her thoughts could become downright lecherous, Tokoyami decided to break the astonishment. He said 95% correct. That would mean those have to weigh over a ton at least considering Midoriya's strength. Hiroshima had a giant grin on his face as his quirk began to activate due to excitement. To fight his foes even though he's heavily handicapped that so that's so manly. The eater rubbed his chin in concentration to think there was another way to train your speed. I'll have to give that a try after the festival. Suddenly his phone began to ring, breaking him out of his thoughts. He eat excused himself and answered the phone. He would not be returning to the tournament after this phone call. Itsuki trembled as he stared at the crater in front of Izuku. To think that the boy who couldn't even look him in the eye 11 months ago was this powerful, I'm going to end this now, Bakugu. My sensei always taught me to never play with my opponent. Katsuki shot off his ass as soon as he registered those words, only to see that his opponent had disappeared. Where the hell did he go? Above. No, be he his frantic thoughts were cut off as he felt a piercing pain to the back of his neck, sending him into blissful unconsciousness. Izuku he's gotten so strong. He's not that wimpy kid who took everyone's shit. He's able to protect himself. Finally Katsuki whispered before everything went dark. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.